What's up guys, it's Frock for Dark. This right here is a Lumia 950 and this has just arrived in my mailbox. And there is a very particular reason as to why I wanted this one. And that's due to the fact that we're going to be shoving Windows 11 onto this thing. We're bringing this thing kicking and screaming into the modern age. Now, as you guys may know, Windows 10 Mobile was discontinued, kind of rendering these phones kind of useless. But since this one runs a 64-bit ARM chip compared to most Windows phones, which run 32-bit, we get to shove the ARM version of Windows 11 on here. So, I'm honestly excited to try this out and see if it's possible. It is possible, but I want to see if I can do it. While I originally bought the Lumia 640 to kind of do this thing with, and because it was cheap and to make a video about, which was very successful, I was very disappointed to find out that you can't actually do this mod on most Windows phones because this runs a 32-bit ARM chip, which Windows 11 isn't actually compiled for. So without further ado, let's crack into this thing. Slice that open there. And we also got to slice this bit right here. that. Uh, I really don't like how the sellers just put sticky tape all over the box because I have a feeling that if I try and take this off it might actually take off some of the printing and also just my nails kind of digging in trying to get this out. If you're a seller on eBay, don't do this. This is a stupid idea and you've kind of ruined this box. That's if I don't get this tape off correctly. But for now, I want to get inside this thing and make sure I wasn't scammed. Could you imagine if I was? Ooh, look at that. This thing is not in the best condition. Thanks for your advertising. I don't really want your thing on my phone. Thank you. So here it is compared to the 640 XL that I was looking at. And quite frankly, I kind of really like the size of the non-XL model. It kind of, I don't know, just looks nice. Before we look at the phone, let's uh, take a look what else is in here. Oh, we have an information thing and big old heap of nothing in here. So put that aside. Set up your Microsoft account. Oh, what's this? product and safety info, whatever. Up oh, here's a roadmap style instruction manual. So this basically tells you how to use the phone, all the stuff and things inside. Wait a second, does this have face unlock? That's actually really cool. Imagine if we can get Windows Hello to work with this when we shove Windows 11 on it. USB-C, yes! That is amazing, we'll get, we'll get to that in a moment. What else is on here? Uh, let's see, this side of the map, where are we? Basically just telling you how to use the thing. Well, this is gonna be kind of useless once we shove Windows, proper Windows on it. And I folded it up correctly. eBay seller, take notes. Is the charger included? No, it isn't included, but it's USB-C, so I guess. This is really uh, interesting packaging, because that slides in there, but what goes here? That's really weird. Here's the 950 next to the 640XL on my previous video, and as you can see, they look very similar. If we look on the top, the headphone jack's in the same spot. If we look at this side, you got a whole heap of nothing just like before. Now if we look at this side, these buttons might be plastic. They feel like plastic and kind of look like plastic. They're very shiny though. The 950 actually has an extra button there. I'm guessing like some other Sony Xperia phones that that's a camera button, but we'll have to wait and see on that. If we look at the back, we have a much larger flash compared to the 640. Camera module looks really nice. The speaker, well, I don't know which one's better. It's still at the back, so it might still sound a bit crappy. This is a bit scratched, but I could always buy a new back cover because just like the 640, you can actually take off this back cover and get into the phone and removable battery. How cool is that? Oh, it actually has this little thing that you lift up here. So you can pull this out. This is still 3000 milliamp hours. So it's literally the same as the 640. While we're here, I think we're gonna give this thing a bit of a clean, considering I literally just got this thing shipped to me. So I'm gonna disinfect it a little bit just to make sure. You don't know who's been touching this thing or what they've been doing to it. If you've heard some of the stories about what people do to their electronics that I have, you wouldn't wanna touch anything ever again. Or just watch a Lewis Rossman repair video. He'll, he'll explain it out nice and clearly to you. Here we have the slots for microSD and nano sim. Let's put this thing back in, this battery. I kind of don't like that these things were entirely made of plastic. It is kind of cheap feeling, but hey. We'll take a quick look at the bottom and oh yeah, USB-C. And actually, yeah, this is a thinner phone than the 640XL, which is yeah, kind of cool. This definitely feels like a more refined design, but yeah, let's plug this in with USB-C. Let's turn on the phone, why not? 
Wait, that's, that's the volume button. Let's turn on the phone. Felt the vibration? Spring to life. Please. Yes, there we go. Microsoft. And here we go. It is currently booting up with the Windows logo. Can't wait to see this thing boot with the Windows 11 logo. And here we go. We're in setup. So English Australia. Next. And yes, we are in Australia. So let's press next. Here's legal stuff. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Except we are in Adelaide, so you give us Adelaide. There we go. Let me tell you, this UI looks absolutely fantastic with this OLED screen. It reminds me of the way the Zune HD looks. It just looks really nice. This is probably Windows 10's kind of eh UI at its best. It's just like Windows. We have to wait for this thing to install a bunch of apps of varying usefulness. Like Candy Crush. Let's skip to when this is done. Apps. All of the apps have finished installing. Next. You gotta love the effort put into this screen. All done. Have fun. Done. If this doesn't scream Microsoft, then I don't know what does. And here we go. It's loading still. And here we are. I don't care about the sim error. We are now in the stock Windows 10 mobile experience. And yep, I was right. <laughs> I was right, it comes with candy oh, boost. No, no, stop. Stop, please go away. Please go away. I can't uninstall until it's installed. Whoever in my last video said that Game Loft Hub wasn't one of the stock apps on Windows 10 Mobile is just plain wrong, because here it is. We've actually got quite a few more apps than last time that we didn't get to look at. Oh, no way. We have Continuum. Oh, we get to actually try this out. Okay, and now that Boost Juice is installed, you know what I get to do with this? I get to uninstall it because it's useless. And I don't even want to look at it. And same goes you, Candy Crush Saga, you can just get off this phone. I know I'm going to completely nuke everything on here anyways when I go to shove Windows 11 on here, but still. Really? Uber? Go away. Game Loft Hub, I bet you is the same... I'm telling you guys. This is a Windows 8 mobile app that still looks exactly the same, but we've got new games on here. Let's see, we got Cars, Fast as Lightning, HD. Oh, we got HD games on this one compared to the 640. Asphalt Overdrive, Spider-Man Unlimited, Ice Age. We got Spider-Man 2 on here as well. Man, this is just like a PlayStation. Despicable Me Minion Rush. Oh, good lord. This looks a lot less sad than last time, but this is still kind of sad. I don't know, it's not too shabby. I literally just uninstalled Candy Crush and, it, and it, it just installed it again. Seriously. No. Netflix, go away, please. What else is there? Here's the Lumia Creative Studio. Latest. See all photos. Right, I haven't taken any photos yet. Fair enough. Lumia Highlights, Lumia Offers, yeah, whatever. Here's an interesting storage app. It's just a shortcut to storage in the settings. View 3D Preview. What, they never finished it? Microsoft? What is this font? <laughs> Man, this app really is unfinished. I can see why this is a preview. Uh, here we have the wallet. What is this? So we'll try and continue them later. Let's see this camera. I want to see the difference in camera quality. And immediately, this looks really nice compared to the 640. There you go. Now this always on display makes a bit more sense considering this is an OLED screen. So let's compare this head to head with the 640 XL. And I mean, yeah, the detail of this actually looks pretty decent. I do like this. It looks a little bit warm though, because in person, that there is a very cool white, so. And while we're here, let's film a video on it. What's up guys, it's Frog for Dog. And this is the Lumia 640 XL. And yeah, we have lost all detail in this part of the table. And that's the video. Yeah, we have lost all detail in this part of the table. Same as before, the speaker on this just absolutely gets so distorted at full volume and it still only goes What's up to 30, I don't know why. What happens if I click on Continuum? Connect to a Windows 10 PC. Hold on, hold on just one second. Let me turn on my computer. Okay, so I've plugged it in. Do you see a welcome screen? I don't? Wait, I do! Welcome to Continuum, I see it! Continuum is your phone. Powering a second screen. Yes, why are you telling me like this? Like it's a... What? Goodbye. What? No! Not goodbye. But here we are. Let's check this out. The phone seriously just ran out of power. It, it just shut off. 
check it out. We are using Continuum. That is pretty much just a Windows cursor and it's interesting because the time's up here and you have this like bar across the top. I don't know what this is. Let's check this out. Okay, that's probably telling me my SIM card. What's here? Okay, it's saying that's charging. If I click that, it does nothing. If we click down here. Okay, that looks quite a bit like Windows 10, but it's kind of stopped around. Let's press the start button here, and as we can see, we pretty much have a very simplified start menu that mirrors the one on our Windows phone. So let's go to Word, because I want to see what Word looks like. Oh my god, really? Really, guys? Is actually nothing installed on this. Um, what else? Well, I guess we'll take a look at the store since nothing wants to work. So surely the store works. as a very bright blue. Pardon the interruption. Uh, pardon, we gotta update the store. Yeah, yeah, go update. At least we can, you know, multitask and take a look at stuff. But it's kind of like tablet mode on Windows 10 where you can only use, like, one app at a time. And I'm fairly certain you can't... Yeah, you can't actually, like, split-screen anything. At least as far as I can tell, because I can't get this to work. Let's see, what else can we get? Let's get the File Explorer open. Let's have a look at this. So, yep, this is a file browser, for sure. You can get this on Windows 10, I believe, if you, like, make some kind of shortcut or something. I mean, this is pretty much just kind of a light version of Windows 10. Okay, Microsoft Store just got updated. It's telling me on my phone down here. And if we go up... And yeah, this here is literally just the Windows 10 uh, app store. And this is the app that killed the 640XL in the last video. So yeah, fair enough. Scrolling feels absolutely awful on this. It's really stiff. And uh, yeah, please don't tell me it's only a full screen calculator. Okay. Right, every app is like this. This sucks. This really does suck. So yeah, that's pretty much as far as we're getting today with Windows 10 Mobile. I looked at it in more detail in my last video if you want to check that out. But now we're going to look into shoving Windows 11 on this thing and making it maybe more useful? We'll find out. Why is there a hole in the screen? Is it really meant to be like that? That is strange. Wait a second. This thing is wireless charging? Oh, no way! I didn't even know that! We are rebooting into flash mode. I'm following this video here. So, if you guys want to do this yourself, check out this video. I'll link it in the description below. And that is how you can install Windows 11 on your Windows phone. Yes, there it is. Also, the video I linked to failed to mention the fact that you got to go to the download tab here and actually download some files specifically for your phone. And mine's almost done. But then, not long after, disaster struck. What I failed to realize is that BitLocker was accidentally enabled when I set up the phone somehow. I still don't know how I did that. But what effectively happened is that when I tried to unlock the bootloader, it pretty much just got stuck on the BitLocker screen, and I needed the key to unlock it, which I didn't have. So yeah, needless to say, I was stuck here on an encrypted drive that I pretty much couldn't get around. I could only think of one solution, and that was reflashing the entire operating system back onto the phone. So yeah, we're gonna have to start from scratch now. <sighs> okay guys, it is the 4th of August, 2023, god knows how many days after I started doing this video, and oh my god, I finally got this thing back onto a functioning operating system after it just got bricked because of BitLocker. This took way too long, but now it's time to shove Windows 11 on this thing. Alright, I'm gonna do something that I should have done to begin with, something that none of the tutorials ever said to do, but we're going to go into settings and disable BitLocker. Because BitLocker sucks. Aha, drive encryption. What? It's off. Bruh. Why was it on? Literally, why was drive encryption on? So I can try flashing it now? I don't know. <laughs> it's time for attempt number two. Will I screw it up this time? Stay tuned to find out. Sweet, it's unlocked and now we gotta boot it into mass storage mode by restarting it manually. Oh man, but that's effort. I don't wanna do effort. Oh hey look, a YouTube tutorial. Ooh, check this out. What is that? That's right, 
It's a tiny 11 ISO. We're gonna be shoving this on our Windows phone, so let's just do this. So we pretty much have to mount the ISO, go to this folder, and then find this file here, install.esd, because we need it for something. All right, and here we have the Windows on ARM deployer. Well, <laughs> they are very upfront here. They're just like, do not format it. Don't do that. Well, now that they're telling me not to do it, I think my impulsive thoughts are starting to win out. Main OS. I think that's something to do with the Windows phone. We can have a little look-sees inside. Critical data? I feel like we should delete this. Hey, remember that file we copied? Yeah, we pretty much need that now. Yeah, there we go. Check it out. It just knows. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are about to deploy Windows 11 ARM on a Lumia 950. Let's hit it in three, two, one. Starting deployment. Hell yeah. Check this out. Okay, so we got like an actual little bootloader on here. And now we got to go to develop a menu. This looks so jank. This is giving me Smaznog vibes. Just look at it. <laughs> Microsoft. So it's currently about 2.30 in the morning, so I can't be too loud and expressive, but we're going to reboot this thing into Windows 10. Sorry, Windows 11. It's just going to say Windows 10 on the boot menu. Uh, here we are on the boot screen, so all we need to do is just press the camera button to select Windows. Well, say Windows 10, but it's actually Windows 11. It is loading. Hmm. I'm getting a slight inkling that this might not be speedy. I wonder why. The suspense is absolutely unreal. <gasps> oh my god. I mean, so far, this still could be, you know... Windows 10 Mobile, because it had these loading screens, and you know, it could look like this UI, but just you wait. Oh my god, that was the laggiest Windows 11 boot sound I've ever heard. We heard the s- well... Um, I don't think that's good. Okay, at least- Okay. Phew. It's actually working. And this is getting really, really hot. Yeah, that was making me worried, but hey, look at this. Oh, and touch just works. We live in Australia, let's press yes. And look at that, the out-of-box experience supports a portrait view. And it, it just works. I don't know what this artifacting on the top of the screen here is, but hey, at least it's something. It looks cool. This is actually incredible. It detects a sim. Well, there's no sim in it, but it knows that it can have a sim. Actually, look, let's not connect to the internet. I want to use a local account on this thing, not a Microsoft one. Yep, except I've read it thoroughly. Who is going to use this device? Hey, there it is. And that actually looks pretty good because that is literally just the Swift key keyboard. All right. That feels good. All right, this is this is fairly decent. Also, it's canon that uh, Frog Fadok has to be lowercase. So far, this out-of-box experience is really phone optimized. This is really nice and actually just works well. If they just ported this straight to a Windows phone, no one would bat an eye. This might take a few minutes. Well, it's going to take a few hours on this thing, so we'll see you in a bit. This is the Lumia 950 with Windows 11 loaded onto it. Um, actually, it's Tiny11, which is a modified version of Windows 11. Yeah, 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 whatever. Let's turn this thing on. And then we enter into this screen. So we have three options here. We have Windows 10. I mean, it says Windows 10, but it's actually Windows 11. We also have Dummy, please ignore. Uh, I don't know if this is a dummy menu or if it's calling me a dummy. And finally, we have the developer menu. And you select which one you want by pressing the camera button down here. Personally, I want to see what the dummy please ignore menu does. Oh, it just blue screens the entire phone with this really interesting looking blue screen. Looks even more goofy if you put it this way. But the option we really want is Windows 10, which will boot us into Windows 11. And here we go, we are now booting into Windows 11. Here we have the login screen and my name on here. And here we are, we have booted into Windows 11. 
I'm gonna quickly increase the brightness here so you guys will be able to see this, but it means the battery is gonna drain very fast. So you can actually swipe up on this little bit down here to open it up, and yeah. All right, so here we are. We have booted into Windows 11 on the Lumia. We can turn it around to landscape. And it, you know, it begins to look more like a traditional desktop. And honestly, the gestures on Windows 11 make this thing actually really nice to use. You can see it's not the smoothest thing in the world, but honestly, once you change a few things, it's not too bad to run on here. So we can actually take a look at stuff on here. We have an app here called Airwaves, which basically is a way to listen to the radio, but you need headphones that actually have an antenna in them, which I don't think I have, so we're going to close that. And I'll just show you general window management. When you have an app that's not too intensive, it's actually really smooth. Like, have a look at that. That's not too bad. And on Windows 11, they actually made the hitboxes a lot larger to grab windows and resize them. So it's a little bit painful, unless that doesn't resize. I don't think that resizes. Yeah, and then you get that. And if you swipe then, it lags like hell as it tries to open up the bloated widget section of Windows 11, which I hate. And it's just a standard affair. We can press close there, and you can see how large my thumb is compared to that. This would probably be a much better experience on the 950XL, but I only got a regular 950 here, like an absolute peasant, but that's okay. Next up, we have the beloved Windows Calculator app, probably one of my favorite calculator apps of all time. And you know, here's the calculator app, you know, your standard affair, you can move it around, but also you can put it into full screen. Okay, to be fair, honestly, I kind of would prefer if this history thing wasn't here when it's in full screen like this, but honestly, when it's like this, it's fairly usable because the buttons are huge. It's basically like a mobile app, but if we put it sideways, then we kind of get a much more accurate representation of what it would look like. But of course, the text on the buttons are a little bit too small, but that's okay. We can open up the side here and we can get our like scientific calculator and stuff. And yeah, it's just really nifty. I really, really like this. And we can close it off. I'm telling you now, this, this isn't the fastest thing in the world. Next up, we have the camera app. And as you can see, yeah, I, I don't think the camera actually works on this. Maybe someone will figure it out one day and we can compare what it looks like. But for now, yeah, I don't expect that to work at all. Uh, next up, we have chat. Now the chat app is actually pretty cool because you can install your SIM card and actually use this phone as a phone, even on Windows 11. Uh, you can use mobile data on here. You can make phone calls and SMS texts. This is great. Of course, I don't have a SIM card in here with messages, so I can't really demo this, but I would assume this works, honestly. So yeah, if you're concerned about not being able to use your Lumia 950 as a phone with Windows 11 on it, don't worry, you can. And speaking of which, we have the Dialer app, which is an absolutely great name for it. Instead of calling it phone, nah, this is the Dialer. You go in here, you call people, and then you hit the call button. Yeah, well, it's uh, gonna error out simply due to the fact that there's no SIM card and also that's not a real number. I'm not gonna test if this thing can call emergency services, but next time I'm in an emergency, I'm going to boot this phone up specifically so I can test it. As you can see, you have your contacts and your call history. Pretty standard stuff, honestly. Phone number formatting Russian? Wait, what's this? Italian, Russian, or none? That's interesting. All right, next up here we have File Explorer, and we all know what File Explorer is. It honestly runs pretty well on here. Well, I say that as it takes ages to load in, but no, you can just look at all your files and see all the stuff. It's really cool, very epic. You can go right into the system drive, do whatever you want. It's literally a computer. It's literally just a Windows computer, so have fun. While we're here, I'm going to show you the multitasking. So pretty much like Windows 11, you can do split screen. And it's actually really cool that now Windows 11 supports like proper portrait split screen like this. It's really nice. Thank you, Microsoft, for adding this. And we drag it down here. Check that out. We got split screen file explorer. We can rotate it this way. Oh, and would you look at that? It scales perfectly. See, Windows 11's actually really gone a long way to make these animations a lot smoother. I'm not sure if you guys have ever used Windows 10 or Windows 8 while trying to rotate. That <laughs> sounds weird as hell to say. It has like this animation where it zooms out and then switches. But on Windows 11, it's so much smoother, the animation, honestly. They've really fixed rotation on here. 
but it's laggy on here because this is a phone from 2015, so yeah. Here we have the Lumia settings. This is something that's brought on here by the Windows on ARM team, the ones who helped put it on here, and basically gives you some settings to help customize your Windows 11 on mobile experience, and yeah, it's quite nice, honestly. So here you can see your device um, information. So that's my device, you can see. Very cool, very epic, and we got the information about the phone. Forget, I can't swipe in from the side because it opens up these stupid widgets that no one likes. If we go into color profile, I can probably change the colors of the screen. Oh yeah, this app breaks a lot. And also the color profile thing's broken as well. I know for a fact that the glance screen's also broken. Yeah, that's broken. We have gestures and touch here. There you go, you can double tap to wake the phone. But something really cool that I'll show you here is if I press lock, it'll take a second. Look at that! They've actually re-implemented the always-on display from Windows 10 Mobile. So really, besides the cameras, I can't think of many features that you're actually missing out on. You get a full experience from running this thing on Windows 11. And yes, it will move around to prevent burn-in, so that's cool. What else we got? It really does take a bit for just kind of anything to load on here. Next up we have Microsoft Edge, so a full desktop browser on here. Now I actually use Edge as my default browser, but in its default state it kinda sucks. It really does suck when you have all these ads and news and all this crap popping up and all that, but once you fix that it's not too bad as a browser. Just, just no. Just shut up please. <laughs> Alright, so we go onto the top and then we tap to search. It's a little small, but if we go into settings, you can change the layout. So here we have the traditional keyboard, which is going to be borderline unusable. Look how thin those keys are, but if you really need those full, you know, control, alt function like a regular desktop keyboard, you've got them, you can do them. Also, by the way, they've mapped control, alt, delete to volume and power. Like that, which is really nice actually. But the way I prefer to use a keyboard is to actually undock it and you pretty much get a keyboard that's a lot larger and more traditionally styled and you can actually move it around which is quite nice. But if you put it on the bottom, you can actually type on this fairly well like a normal mobile keyboard. It's really nice. Alright, so let's go to YouTube. Hey, I actually got that. Nice. Dot com and we hit enter. Let's see how this goes. I haven't actually tried this yet. By the way, if you're wondering about the phone, the phone is getting extraordinarily hot. This thing is almost burning me to the touch. It gets really, really hot running Windows 11 on it. You can see kind of how much it's lagging when it's scrolling, which is kind of funny. So let's go to the top. If you swipe up to the top, you can actually refresh the page by doing that, but that's just gonna lag out everything. There we go. And we're gonna type in here, frog for duck. Very responsive keyboard, not too bad. I really like this keyboard. Also, just to show you guys, um, Well, that's not really what I want to say. I was trying to say, hello, yes, you can swipe type on here, but yeah, you can actually swipe type on here. So if you prefer to do that, then that is an option. Very cool, very epic. And you can already see it's already trying to do video playback right now. So that's interesting. This looks a lot better browsing the internet in landscape here, honestly, but uh, I'll, qu I'll quickly show you. If you go to type, um, the keyboard gets a bit uh, weird. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. This is really weird. If we dock this, that's a bit better. I mean, the keys are larger, but if we go into settings, there is one that I skipped and that is split. Never mind, that is like basically unusable. Why are those keys so small? Look at all the space. All right, to test this out, let's watch my previous Windows Phone video. Let's put this on full blast. Quite confusing, but you can only imagine and check that out. Oh, I have to I stop to playing. Stop playing. And check that out, you can actually go up to 100, unlike Windows 10 Mobile, which only lets you go up to 30. So, that's kind of funny. Let's put this into full screen, and then we have to actually rotate it ourselves. There we go. So what's it currently playing at now? It's currently playing at 480p. We're going to put this all the way up to 1080p 60, and let's see how this runs. Open up the box, and... Oh, it's a Windows phone. That, by the way, is a true story. That is literally what this Windows phone shipped in, an iPhone 13 box of all things. At least I didn't get scammed, because this is actually what I bought. Okay, I can't stop it. Stop. Okay. Um, oh, now it's skipping ahead 20 seconds. Uh, weird. 
Yeah, this thing really can't support playing YouTube videos at 1080p. It just doesn't want to do it. And this speaker is just absolutely awful. This is one of the worst speakers I've ever heard on a smartphone. In case you want a bit of a reminder of what it sounds like, let's, let's give it a little shot. To do that, I've pretty much always been using Android phones my entire life, so yeah. Okay, stop. Much stop playing. Shut up. Okay. I think it's... This nope, it's just dropping frames. Windows 10. Well, at least this is Windows oh my 10, god. Is actually kind of a different version of oh Windows my 10. god. Oh my god, this is worse than I thought. <laughs> this is really, really bad. Stop playing. Stop playing. Give up. We'll Give up. Stop. Oh my god, stop playing. Alright. So Cancel. Oh. Exit, exit. There we go. <laughs> Oh man, this thing. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to watch YouTube on here, have fun. Ah, next up we have the Microsoft Store. And yeah, pretty much it's your standard affair. You just go on here and you just look for new apps and stuff to install. Okay, so what I basically wanted to do was try and load a Windows subsystem for Android so I can run Android apps on Windows on Windows Phone. It doesn't really show up for people in Australia, I think, so. I'd have to do a bunch of workarounds and I can't be stuffed at the moment, so I might look into it later, but I already know it. it's just gonna run like crap. <laughs> like, if it can't handle Windows, how would it handle emulating Android apps on Windows? I, yeah, I just don't see it working. Next up is a pre-installed app on here called Mobile Shell, and this basically turns your Windows 11 phone into, well, a Windows 11 mobile device. It makes the UI look a lot more like Windows 10 Mobile, with the uh, bar on the top and the nav bar on the bottom. Here on the top, you've got your clock and the battery, which is at 55%. You have your SIM, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. And then you have search, start menu, and back button, and also this thing to dismiss this entire UI. So let's press search, and it actually vibrates the phone, which is pretty cool. So, and also when you get notifications on here through like, you know, your Windows 11 notifications, it vibrates the whole phone as well. So they pretty much made this thing actually work, well, like a phone, because it is a phone, but it's running a desktop OS. Oh, hold on, can we use Bing AI? Can you run Windows? There is no number row. Why is there no number row? I'm gonna ask Bing AI if we can do this. Let's press chat. It's gonna open it up in Edge, isn't it? Yep. There we go, now it's going into chat and let's see what Bing AI has to say about this. It seems that some developers have been able to install Windows 11 on a Lumia 950 XL which is the most powerful Lumia phone. However, it is not an official supported way of running Windows 11 and may have some issues or limitations. You can try, oh my god, please. You can check out some of the videos and articles about this topic here. Okay, fair enough. It sent me a bunch of ads to buy a Lumia 950, so it kind of shows you where Microsoft's priorities are. So let's press here, and uh, yeah. That's the one problem with using this as a floating thing, that it, it just covers up everything. But then docking, it kind of fixes it, but then you have less room, so. And then I'll write, okay, cool. Okay, let's hit enter. That took intense concentration to be able to type that properly. Wow, that's Im <laughs> wow, that's impressive. How do you like Windows 11 on your Lumia 950? It is very <laughs> laggy. And I'm just, I'm just gonna send that. See what Bing AI has to say. I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe it's because Windows 11 is not up to my Lumia devices. Hmm, yeah, don't say. <laughs> Here's a prompt here, yes, the battery drains very fast, and also, can I downgrade to Windows 10, which is funny. Which, you can, you can roll this back to Windows 10 Mobile if you want. Actually, you can dual boot it as well, which is really cool, but, meh, I can't be stuffed, I've got my other one for that. Yep, it pretty much gives you basic tips and tells you you can switch back. Let's ask how I can switch back to Windows 10 Mobile. Okay, so it, what it's doing now is basically telling me how to go back to Windows 10 desktop from Windows 11. It's confused. We're gonna stop responding. We're gonna search up who is Frock for Duck. Last time I did this at like the start of this year, it gave me just the complete wrong response. But let's find out what it has to say about me. What? Frock for Duck can be a few different things. No, Frock for Duck's not a misspelling of Rockford. Frock for Duck could also be a name of a YouTube channel that talks about various topics of interest. That is so vague. Rockford Wines, Rockford College, Rockdale, Sydney. 
Frog for Duck YouTube. Why am I showing so much Bing AI stuff in this video? Well, simply due to the fact that if Windows 11 Mobile was actually a thing, you already know it'd have just a bunch of ChatGPT and Bing AI stuff on it. Knowing Microsoft, they would have just absolutely loaded it onto the phone. So yeah, this is pretty much the Windows 11 Mobile experience if you really think about it. We are already down to 40%, so I say let's plug this thing in, which, guess what that means? This phone is gonna get even hotter now. Man, it's already burning me to the touch. Could you imagine if I could make this phone even hotter by plugging it in and charging it? So, let's see if it'll actually charge or if it's gonna drain battery while charging. Who is Frog for Duck on YouTube? Frog for Duck is a YouTube creator who makes videos about various topics that interest him, such as gaming, technology, music, and more. I mean, kinda accurate. He also has a second- No way! No way! He also has a second channel called Frock. It knows I have a second channel called Frock. Oh, that's awesome. He also has a second channel called Frock where he posts whatever he wants. That is, okay, that sentence, that's impressive. That is very, very accurate. All right, let's hit enter. What does it have to say about this? This is basically the equivalent of going onto a Minecraft server in 2014 and then typing, I'm recording in chat. Say hi to YouTube. Oh, I see. Well, hello, Frog for Duck. I'm honored to be a part of your video. How did you find the Lumia 950 device for filming and editing videos? What? For the filming part, probably. Like, this wouldn't be the worst thing to film with, but for editing? For editing videos? Yeah, I don't think you can edit video on here. It would just be an absolutely miserable experience. Anyway, I think that's enough of uh, Bing AI. So let's have a look at this. Uh, we can press this to open up the start menu. If we swipe down, Literally nothing happens, so that's fun. I mean, I don't really see the point when like you can't actually access a lot of stuff on here. And sure, you get a back button, which is nice, but I think I honestly prefer using the phone without it. It's a cool novelty to make it act more like a Windows phone, but yeah, I just kind of prefer using the regular desktop because at least then you can access your brightness and all that stuff. Oh, what's this? We can run MS Paint on our Windows phone? Oh, hell yeah. We get to create some art on here. And Microsoft has still not made a dark theme for the new Paint app, which I'm honestly baffled by. Why have... what? Uh, I don't know. It's automatically made a canvas to match my screen resolution, but yeah, we're not doing portrait. We're doing landscape. Um, right. Can I collapse this ribbon thing? Please tell me I can. I don't think I can. Okay, let's draw my profile picture. This is gonna be hilarious. Watch this. Oh, those dots are tiny. Let's make this a bit bigger this time, so at least I have a bit more room for my fat fingers to move across the screen. Alright, and we do that, and we do that. That's not the worst attempt in the world, trying to create an image on here, but honestly, that looks kind of cool. And to be fair, it's fairly responsive, so if you want to draw on your Lumia, well, you can. And oh wow, we are, we are desperately running out of space, so there's really not much I could actually, like, really install on here. I mean, of course, I could probably chuck in an SD card, and yes, this does support just plugging a USB flash drive over USB-C, which, nice. And look at that. Frock.png on the Lumia? Oh hell yeah! The phone app. We have the dialer and the phone app. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, the dialer app is actually a third party app, but this phone app is actually an official Microsoft one, so. And uh, yeah, it's a very similar UI, you can sort of see where it was inspired from, but it's Windows 10 styled, so I can sort of see why they made a new one. Oh wow, it really does act like the exact same thing. Next up, we have the terminal. Nah, I don't like PowerShell. Let's do command prompt. Now, remember my uh, Windows Phone video when I tried an app called MS-DOS Shell? Now, that wasn't a real terminal, as some of the commenters have pointed out. It was kind of just like a little fake one, but this here, this is the real deal. Oh, check this out. I'm gonna hack your computer. Oh, look at that. I'm hacking your computer. Look at all this stuff I did. Oh, 
I've just hacked into your computer. Look at all your files. Let's do Winver. Check it out, Windows 11 on the Lumia. Now I'm not sure how well you guys can see this, but can you see that little Windows logo on the spacebar? Yeah, this phone has burn-in on its OLED screen and the eBay seller never told me about that, so yeah, I might get a little partial refund for that one. Let's install a game on here to see how much of a graphical powerhouse this thing is. So we're gonna do Crossy Road, just because it's free and it should be intensive enough for this thing. I don't really see this running anything more intensive than Crossy Road, so we're just gonna stick to that, I reckon. Where is Crossy Road? What happened to Crossy Road? Why is it all just a bunch of knockoffs? I, I thought Crossy Road was on the Microsoft store. What has happened? Where's Crossy Road? I don't wanna have to install one of these apps. Oh no. Should we do it? I think we will. Let's install Minecraft Bedrock Edition on here. I'm not even gonna try running Java Edition here. All right, well, Minecraft was taking a bit too long to download, so instead we're just gonna muck around with a few other things on here, and that means plugging in this USB drive. Right, we need an adapter too. Let's plug this in. And let's also plug this in. Hey, it just figures it out. All right, so we've copied the files, so we just go in here and we press paste. And it's doing it. Look at that, we are at one megabyte a second. Okay, let's go into the folder of Lumia stuff and let's find out what I've put on here. Let's start off with a little something I like to call the E word. Don't let Nintendo find out about this. No way. File Explorer does not want to respond trying to open up this emulator. Who knows if this is gonna load or maybe I'm just, maybe my expectations are a bit too high and I really do need to wait like five minutes for this thing to open. Okay, so I have something else we could try here. Let's try out the PC port of Super Mario 64. Can I get a single thing to open on here? It's open in the background, but it's not actually showing up with anything. So I don't know what's going on. Nope, oh, doesn't exist. Create it? Sure, let's do that. Oh, what? Couldn't create directory. Right, so that's a whole load of absolutely nothing. I know what we can play. Yeah, let's play a little game of Flow Free because there should be absolutely nothing demanding about this. Let's hit play. Is it gonna work? Let's hit full screen. We need that full screen action. But will it load? <laughs> no. This is probably the longest, oh my god, free play. There's absolutely no sound and it's laggy. Can you believe it? Flow free is laggy. But I mean, once you're in, pretty much, oh no, even this is laggy. Literally everything is laggy on here. This is sad. But you know what? If you need a game on here, well, this is a game that is playable. Now, how do I get out? Oh yeah, simple. Yeah, swipe that down and hit close. Okay, well that works too, I guess. Okay, hold up. <sighs> Minecraft was just opening and then it crashed and died. We could try that again. Look, Mojang. Ah, Mojang. Come on. Yep, there we go, Minecraft. 41%. It freezes. And it's gonna die, isn't it? Yeah. Oh well, nothing works because display acceleration, drivers, this, this, that, whatever. So, don't expect to be playing any games on here besides, I don't know, Flow Free. So yeah, that is pretty much the Windows 11 on Lumia experience. You can't really do much with it, but it's still a really, really cool novelty. And honestly, it's just really impressive and really cool that it runs on it at all. So yeah, my name is Frog for Duck. You can say that however you like, I really don't care. Consider becoming a channel member for some bonus videos. And yeah, new videos whenever I want. That's the end of the video. Thanks for watching.